If you have any good ideas on how I should be doing this, let me know in the comments below. Hey everybody, happy social distancing. I'm doing the same thing. Uh, but today I'm gonna do a, a photography vlog. Not my normal one. It looks like I'm out in the woods, but I'm not. I'm in my yard. And I was out here scooping poop. Oop, there goes Lula right back there. I think she's making one. You see her over there? There she is. That's Lula. Now, what you notice here, what I just pointed to her with, is a feather. Uh, look at that beautiful sheen. That beautiful green and blue, and there's some, like, purples. It's fantastic. And I was out here scooping dog poop, and uh, this feather was laying under the tree here. Uh, and I want to take a picture of it. Uh, and I've got a perfect little spot in my house. I'll try and remember to show that to you later where I've got a real tall, skinny space. And if I could make a nice photo of this that would show off this beautiful, it's kind of windy blowing around, this beautiful green and the, these beautiful colors up here, I think it could turn out really cool. Now I've got a couple of challenges here. So one is accurately representing the feather and doing that through photography and um, printing and all that. But I also need to be really careful out here because um, possessing most feathers is illegal. And uh, I believe they call that the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. But it makes possessing feathers and any um, parts of a lot of different birds illegal. Uh, I'm not sure what bird this came from. I My guess is that it came from a magpie because we do have a lot of magpies cruising around in the yard. I don't know if that's illegal to own a magpie feather or not, or to possess. Um, so in order to not even take that risk at all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to photograph it out here. Even though my house is 15 feet away right there, I'm not going to bring it in the house and set it up and do it in the house. Uh, I'm going to leave it out here in the yard. Um, I'm probably going to move around. I'm going to look for a better background, like something to put it on besides just kind of the ugly dirt down here or just the grass. Um, I'm going to poke around and look and see what I can find to set this on to make a nice background. Like I don't like that, but that's kind of what I'm looking for. Something out here uh, that might work as a nice background. Maybe like if I could find a nice clean piece of aspen tree trunk. In fact, let's, let's walk over there and check that out. Uh, as I see, I've got a, some nice aspen trees in my yard. Um, but anyway, I don't want to be, like, uh, accused of possessing this feather by bringing it in the house. So, you know, if I might find, a, like, a nice place against the tree and zoom in tight. Actually, it's really clean right here. So I might look at doing that right there. So I think that could be really cool. Uh, but I'm going to have to kind of fiddle around with that. And uh, get set up and test this out. But that's going to be my project for this vlog. If that interests you, awesome. If that doesn't, that's awesome too. Because this is totally out of my, my wheelhouse as well, doing kind of uh, still life type subjects. But hey, you know, we're, we're distancing and I'm not getting out and doing much photography. So since something caught my eye, I'm going to try and make a nice photo of it. And I've even got a nice place in mind. If I can, uh, you know, recreate what's in my head... Uh, I've got a nice place in the house where I hopefully could make a nice photo here. So I'll get back to you here. I'm going to run in the house. I'm going to get my camera out uh, and tripod and uh, just see if I can make this work. It's kind of windy, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. So I've got a bunch of things going against me. The light's really nice and soft and overcast. It just finished raining. Um, but I'm going to do my best. Whether it works great or not, you're going to see the process out here. See you in a little bit.
All right, so here's here's my plan. Good plan, bad plan. This is my plan. I don't know. Um, I have a really tall tripod, which is excellent. It's a Gitzo gigantic tripod. But up here on this tree, there's a really nice little clean part of the bark there that I want to photograph this up against that little clean um, part of the bark. So what I did is I took a little tiny skinny piece of uh, gaffer tape there. It's very delicate flower, but I think I can use that gaffer tape and have it hidden and stick it to the tree. I'm gonna try that. I have to get a ladder, I brought a ladder out. Uh, and I'm gonna try and place it exactly like in the, in the coolest spot I can find on the tree trunk and then use my Fuji GFX 50R and the gigantic tripod to get up there and take a picture of it. I'm still working out the plan here. Uh, all right, plan failure number one. Gaffer tape does not stick to aspen tree bark. That aspen tree bark, if you even look on my finger there, it's like, uh, it's almost got like a chalky kind of um, coating on it or something. So gaffer tape won't stick to it. So I'm gonna have to think about this some more, but I'm bummed about that. Cause I think I like that. That would probably make a nice little background. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to think about it. I'm gonna pause this, give it some more thought. Shoot. All right, I'm back with a new plan and it's not a great plan. But here's what I'm back with, a staple gun. So now my plan is, I looked and looked and looked, I couldn't think of any good way to do this. Speaking of which, if you have any good ideas on how I should be doing this, let me know in the comments below. It will be far too late for me to do anything about it, but it will help me, uh, you know, be able to think about this in a different way if something like this ever comes up again. But now my plan is to drop a staple right across the, um, what do you call that? The spar? The spar of the feather? That's what I'm going to call it, even if, if it's, that's not what it is. But I'm going to drop a staple across the spar into the tree. Hopefully that'll hold the feather up there. And then I'll have to go in in Photoshop and remove the staple. Which, normally I'm not into like removing things in Photoshop, but this is a photo for me to hang on my wall. And uh, I can't think of a way to do it without doing that. So that's, that's my plan. That's what I'm going to plan on doing. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Okay, so that mostly worked. It crushed the little, the, the spar of the feather a little bit there. So it might end up doing some extra Photoshop work. I'm going to back out the staple a little bit so it's not pushing it so tightly against the tree. So it curves a little more naturally. And then I'll get started on the photography, but I have to run in the house and get a tool to just pull that staple out just a tiny bit to loosen its grip. Okay, but so far, I like that better. It's not the ideal solution because I have to Photoshop it, but uh, I think it's gonna work. I'll be right back. Okay, so I think I've got it pretty darn close to the way uh, it'll work here. I've got a couple of little challenges now that I need to address. First one is there's just enough wind out here. I mean, there's quite a bit of wind, but even with it kind of stuck to that tree, the, the tip, you can see it moving around a little bit. So I'll have to make sure I keep my shutter speed high enough and just wait for little lulls in the wind when I'm making the photo. And also the light, although it's really flat uh, and beautiful out here, especially for a nice, soft, delicate subject like this, I might, I'm gonna experiment with punching some more light in here with a little flashlight. Uh, to kind of punch up those uh, that that really cool shimmer and the color in that uh, light. So I'm going to try it both ways with no artificial light and with uh, a little bit of flashlight shining on it, especially up on that tip where we get those beautiful colors. So, uh, so far so good. I'm going to keep working on this. I'm going to get the camera set up uh, now that I have the feather where I want it. And uh, then we'll start making some photos. So there I am on the super giant Gitzo tripod there. 
looking good. I'm going to get the ladder back up here and start to frame the shot and uh, start going. This should be fun. I'll zoom in a little for you there. Eep. This is the Fuji GFX 50R, which I mentioned, and the 45 to 100 millimeter lens, which is excellent. Uh, but at 100 millimeters, I'm not quite filling the frame the way I'd like, so I just got to move it a little closer. Too close. I can't focus close enough. So I do have to run back in the house, and I'm actually going to grab the 120 millimeter F4 which is a much closer focusing lens than this. So I'll be back. Hello. I'm back with the 120 millimeter F4. And uh, this will definitely work. I'm going to start at F16 here. Um, and I want a fair amount of depth of field. I need like that much depth of field, really. And that close and this uh, focal length, I don't think F16 is going to be quite enough, but uh, I don't want diffraction either. I want this thing to be like razor sharp and all the little tiny details in there. So I'll probably shoot at it from F16, then 22, and then even F32, um, just to kind of see how they differ. Um, and it doesn't, uh, it's no harm in trying all different ways. So uh, I'm going to be in manual focus mode. I'm going to uh, use focus peaking to adjust my focus and uh, let it rip. So I'm going to get back up here now again with a different lens. Hopefully this one is the right one. All right, I'm too close now, of course, because I have 120 millimeters instead of 100 now. Okay, so I think I'm ready to start shooting here. I'm at ISO 100, F16, and a half of a second. So this looks pretty good. Uh, a lot of contrast here between the white of the aspen and the dark of the feather. So I'm probably going to have to lift those shadows in uh, Lightroom, which is cool, no problem. Um, but I like, the, I like the scene here. It looks nice. So I'm going to start shooting here. As I mentioned, I'm going to shoot this at f16 and 22 and 32 with just natural light. And then I'm going to come back in with a little flashlight because I think it's going to need some light as I'm, I'm trying to like gauge where I'm getting that beautiful sheen. And I think actually I want to be a hair lower here. Yeah, I'm going to shoot this while I'm here. Uh, I'm going to set an exposure delay, a two-second timer. There we go. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to do another one to make sure nothing was moving there. Yeah, I think it is moving just a little bit. Need to wait for the calm here. Now I'm going to try adding some light with my flashlight, which is in my pocket. Ooh, that makes a big difference. Big, big, big difference. Gotta adjust my exposure, obviously, but yeah, that is that's money right there. Just a little bit of light, but I can really see the the difference. I think that's definitely the way I want to do it. I'm going to go to F22 here.
Back to a half a second. Try a little different angle. So depending on the angle I am pointing this thing, it really punches up the color of that feather. So uh, this down low looks really good. Got a little nice break in the wind. F-22, one half of a second. Ooh, I got way too windy. Shoot. All right, I gotta wait for some more wind here. All right. I think that's it. Uh, I'm gonna run in the house now. I'm gonna take the card out of the camera. I'm gonna leave everything set up here uh, and take this in, look at them on the computer and uh, just kind of see if there's anything else I should do before I take all this stuff down. Uh, I think they're gonna look pretty cool, but I'll be back with a report card from when I actually look at them on the computer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. Uh, I had a chance to go in and look at the computer and uh, I'm happy to report they looked pretty darn good. So I think I'm good. That Definitely using the flashlight on this made a huge difference in being able to punch up the colors on those and really get that sheen. And that's what drew me to the, the feather in the first place when I found it underneath the tree while I was scooping the dog poo. Uh, but that extra light just made a huge difference. So I'm glad I brought that out here. But anyway, here's the setup. I'm done. Um, I think I got what I needed and then I'm gonna have to edit, like I mentioned. I'm gonna have to Photoshop out that little staple that I used to hold up the feather onto the tree. But I really like the uh, the aspen tree bark as a background. So I think that looked uh, probably cooler than I thought it would. And uh, I'm gonna put the feather back on the ground out here because of the uh, possibility that that is a protected feather and uh, it would be illegal for me to possess that feather. So be careful out there if you are uh, photographing feathers, um, which are really cool. Um, make sure you don't possess them, whatever that means. I, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know what that actually means. But uh, I figure I, it, it, I found it in my yard. It's staying out here in my yard. Uh, it seems fine to me being a non-attorney. That's Lula. She's pretty cute. But I did want to uh, show you, as I mentioned, I was going to um, show you where I planned on hanging that feather photo. So what I'm visualizing there is probably a either a three to one crop or a four to one crop, like four feet tall and one foot wide there. And that should look pretty good. So um, maybe on aluminum, I think. I think I'll do a, a matte aluminum or a semi, semi gloss aluminum there. It should look pretty sweet. So if and when that happens and comes together, I will let you know and show you how that looks. See you next time. Have a great day and uh, keep on keeping on.